Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, my name is Sarah. Uh, this YouTube channel is dedicated to documenting my journey becoming a single mother by choice by going through IVF. After getting diagnosed with endometrial cancer and PCOS, I am now cancer free. Um, so if any of those topics appeal to you at all, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to um, get notified anytime I upload new videos. So I am on my way uh, to my fertility clinic right now um, to have my HSG done, or hysterosalpingogram, I think is how you say it. Um, I am so excited to just get this over with. I'm nervous about it. Um, pretty much because I mean, I know it's different than the endometrial biopsy I had done, but I went into that thinking that I was going to be okay and that it wasn't going to hurt that much because I have a high pain tolerance and I was very surprised at how much it hurt. So although I would love to, oh, I need to get over over like several lanes, like four lanes. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I was going somewhere else. Um, so, oh shoot, and now I have to get over again because there is a big truck in the middle of the lane. Okay, so what was I saying? Um, so I want to go into this confidently that I'll be okay and it's not gonna hurt but then I think back to how that's how I felt with my ERA and so I don't want to be like so rudely surprised I don't know I don't know what's better expecting pain or not expecting pain when you when you're in pain I don't know but um, I'll hop on here as soon as I get back in my car and tell you guys exactly how it felt and how it went. I'm also, of course, nervous about the results. I really hope that my tubes are open. I hope um, my uterus looks okay. I hope there's no scar tissue. I hope uh, there's no other abnormalities of my uterus. Um, so I'm a little concerned about that too, of course. And of course, if my tubes are blocked, that is typically the cause for excruciating pain that can, um, that I have read about HSGs if you have blocked tubes. So it'll be okay. It'll be over in like 20 seconds, I hope. So, um, just glad to check this last thing off my list and feel like I have done everything in my power to check all the boxes and make sure I have checked out everything before going into this next transfer. So um, I'm getting really excited. I'm getting excited to, to have a transfer and I would absolutely love it if I could do it this cycle. I'm trying not to get my hopes up that that can happen, but it would be awesome if it could. So, um, I am going to take four Motrin about a half hour before my procedure. So I just have the 200 milligram uh, Motrin tablets. So I'm going to take four of those <clears throat> right around noon because my procedure is at 1230 and hopefully that helps. And um, I'm also drinking my daily harvest smoothie. Today I have the mint cacao one, which is my second favorite. So wish me luck. Next time you see me, I will be done hopefully have good news to report. So I will see you shortly. I'm done. I'm so happy. <laughs> it was not bad at all. No pain. Um, 
I would say it just felt like moderate menstrual cramps. So not even as bad as like the cramping that I was having after my embryo transfer um, when I was pregnant for a week. Like that cramping was definitely worse than this cramping. Um, and everything looks perfect, my doctor said. My tubes are open and clear, no hydrocell things. My uterus has no scar tissue, no polyps. Um, everything is where it's supposed to be and the right shape and everything. Like everything is just normal and perfect and I'm so happy, I'm so happy it's over and I'm happy with the results. So um, I, I was able to talk uh, the radiologist into filming the screen for me. Uh, so I'm going to insert that here for you guys. So you start off, um, you get on top of the table and um, of course they insert the speculum as always. Um, I, I know some people really hate the speculum. It doesn't bother me that much, but maybe because my doctor always uses the like teenage one or like the smaller one on me because I'm smaller. So maybe that is why it doesn't like hurt me that much. Um, so, and then they clean your cervix with like iodine or whatever. So that kind of just feels like a little uncomfortable, but not bad. And then I, I barely felt the catheter go in. Um, I think I felt it like a tiny bit versus like with the embryo transfer, I didn't feel it at all. And then he told me to take deep breaths and uh, like deep, slow breaths. And it just really felt like, um, moderate menstrual cramps and it was done so fast as you can see in the video like it was so fast so 10 seconds 20 seconds um it was not bad at all so i am just so thrilled um that it went so well and the results were i, I couldn't ask for better results so um, so the next hurdle that I have to get through is this ultrasound on Thursday. I am so, so hoping that my lining looks thick and good and I have a dominant follicle. And if that is the case, I am going to really advocate for myself and try to get, um, a transfer scheduled for next week. Um, I would love to not have to waste um, a good lining. Um, yeah, so I'll let you guys know how the ultrasound goes on Thursday and what the next steps are. Worst case scenario is lining doesn't look good. I don't have a dominant follicle. And then I don't know if they would maybe have me come back a couple days later and check it out. Um, or if they, if everything looks good and they just refuse to do a transfer, that would, that would really suck. But I am really hoping, um, that is not the case. So because I am on the east side, of course I have to stop at my favorite corned beef place, Corky and Lenny's, and, um, get a sandwich to take home with me and go back to work. So as um, I was driving, um, I just all of a sudden just got so like emotional and overcome with gratitude and like I just, this journey has been <laughs> so hard um, for me. Like, you know, first of all, doing it on my own, like finally making that decision to do it on my own and then to get slapped in the face with a cancer diagnosis. I mean, it just, 
and thinking that like potentially my ability to have children could be taken away from me um and to you know to go through all of those surgeries and to look back from that cancer diagnosis until now and everything I've been through and and it seemed like everything was going wrong for me like one disappointment after another for so many months and then within the last two months all of a sudden it seems like everything is going right and um, I haven't I mean there is not better news that I could have gotten these last couple months with all of these test results and procedures I'm just so beyond grateful and um, I just wanted to share that with you guys and this is not easy like this journey is not easy and if I mean going through it with a spouse or a significant other is one thing but when you're doing it completely on your own it just takes it to a whole other level of difficulty and um, and it is hard enough as it is like even if you did have somebody to do it with so um, if you are in this same boat if you're going through IVF with or without a spouse um, or significant other you know you are strong like you are so strong and when your desire to have children is is as strong as it is for me um, you don't have a choice you know it's not like there's no option to give up you just you just do what you have to do and I'm willing to do anything like I am willing to go through any amount of pain and any amount of stress and like I'm just willing to do anything for my babies so um, I hope I have some good news for you guys on Thursday uh, with my ultrasound and I will uh, keep you posted so have a great rest of your day or night um, and I'll see you very soon and thank you again so much for your love and support um, if you're not already subscribed please be sure to subscribe and um, thank you again see you very soon bye